Okay, thanks. Um, I'm very sorry that I'm not David Hilliard, um, but nevertheless, I am very pleased, and it's a really great feeling to be one in three quarters of a million, which is what's going to happen later on this month. I'm a housing worker in a local council, and you know, I am really excited that we've got two days' strike coming up on the 16th and 17th of July for a decent pay deal, because we, like lots of people, we've had years of below inflation pay deals and quite frankly we've had enough of it because whilst the cost of living is rocketing you know we're, we're finding the slogan we're using around my office is two percent won't pay the rent anymore and you know somebody who I, who I work with I was talking to them they were saying their mortgage has gone up by 300 pounds a month just during this year they actually can't afford another pay cut to take, to take place and I mean people might not realize it you tend to think you know council workers you're on decent pay it's a decent job all the rest of it there's something like a quarter of a million council workers who earn less than £6.50 an hour, an hour and obviously for those people in real terms it's a very very big cut. There's many of us, myself included, who live on credit just to pay, just to pay the bills every month and when you think that food prices went up something like 9% in May, fuel went up 11%, it means that actually we've got no alternative but to fight when we're told that we have to accept under 2.5% as a, as a pay award. But also, we, you know, more than that, we live in a, in a them and us world. Whilst we're struggling to make ends meet, um, providing services. The rich are getting richer. Adam Applegarth, for instance, he got very rich a few months ago when he was paid £600,000 for breaking the bank, the bank with Northern Rock. And of course, with Northern Rock, the government had no trouble finding £55 billion at the drop of a hat to bail, to bail them out. Yet they say they've got no money to pay for our hospitals, our schools, for our, for our local services. I mean, you know, for me, particularly bitterly, I, I, I find it on a more local level, the director of housing um, where I work here in Camden, last year he got a 17% pay rise whilst I got 2.45% last year. You know, we were told that he took on extra responsibilities and all the time, you know, yeah, I know. But it wasn't more houses, was it? Because I didn't build them. Um, but, of course... And of course, the big thing, you know, this government has no problem at all, absolutely no problem, spending money on death and destruction. You know, they're currently spending something to the tune of 3.3 billion a year on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Again, money that could be used to improve people's lives rather than to kill them. And now they have the cheek, the absolute cheek, to turn around and tell us that it's our pay rises that are fueling inflation. You know, and I mean, I'm sorry, that's something that I just can't accept. You look at the main contributors to inflation: it's fuel, it's food, it's housing. So I think really, Brown should be turning around and telling you know, people like the top three oil companies in the US, last year they had profits of 10 million pounds every single hour, on the hour, every single hour, 10 million pounds. They should be turning around and telling them that they're the problem, not those of us who provide the, servi provide the services that we all need. So, uh, <laughs> so I do think now is the time to say enough is enough. As Sarah in the chair mentioned, the strikes by teachers and civil servants last month, or uh, month before, on the 24th of April, gave us, I think, a taste of just what's, pe what's possible and how people feel. You know, people will either, I'm sure, have gone on some of the protests, joined the picket lines or seen the pictures. There were thousands of young workers took to the streets. And actually, for me, it made me realise just how angry people feel and that there's a new generation of activists who, who do want to fight. And I think it's the kind of people who've been inspired by the mass movements of the anti-war struggles, the people who've been involved in, in in, in politics over the last few years through those mass movements. They want to take that same kind of mass movement to our fight over pay. And I think that's something that we should be welcome. I also think over the last few weeks, we've seen that you can win. You only have to look at the tank, uh, tanker drivers, you know, who after only a few days of strike action, they smashed through Brown's, Brown's pay barrier. And that's the kind of thing that, that we want to see. And I think after only a year, um, Gordon Brown is, on, is absolutely on the ropes. You know, last year, he was going to be the, you know, the new... Um, well, the new Blair, really, but he was, you know, he was meant to be something different. It was all going to be better for everybody. Only a year later, he can't even win an election in Crewe, never mind in Henley. And I mean, I don't know how other people feel, but personally, I always think that it's best to kick someone when they're down because you're going to have the best chance of finishing them off in that point. So. So I, I do think now, now is actually the time to fight against Brown. But I also think it's important that we act together. I was really quite you know, disappointed that we didn't have our ballot in time for us to be taking action alongside the state teachers and civil servants. And this time they're unable, they're unable to be with us. But I actually hope that our strike action goes on till September and that we can all fight, fight together over, over this to break through, so that all of us break through the pay barrier. Not just because actually it'll give us the best chance of winning, do, do we need to unite, but also I think 
But if we fight together, our struggles can help generalise all kinds of political questions as well. Why is it that we don't have decent homes and schools in society? Why is it that governments will spend uh, millions on war? Why is it that profit is put before need? So, I mean, you know, for me, I do think our strikes in less than two weeks, we want to see as many people coming to visit our picket lines. There'll be demonstrations up and down the country. We want people to join those demonstrations. We want, you know, we'll, we'd, I'd welcome any of you to come to my work to tell people how much you want to support them going out on strike and you want to see us win. All of that is absolutely necessary. And as many people who do that, the better to help us make sure that everybody does come out on the 16th and 17th. And I started... I, I haven't used all my time, I don't think, but I started by saying that I was proud to be one in three quarters of a million. But actually, deep down, what I want to be is just one person in millions who take up the fight not just for pay, but actually to see a better kind of world around us where we're not having to just fight for the crumbs, but fight for, fight for a society that puts people before profit.